Hey guys, welcome to another um, brew day, I guess. What we're gonna use, uh, or what we're gonna do this time, I went to Herald Street Brewing and I tried their, their uh, West Coast Pilsner. Oh my God, that's delicious. So he actually gave me the idea or I try it and say, I want to have something like this in my fridge. So what we're gonna do is basically a West Coast Pilsner. What it makes it West Coast? Well, we're gonna use Centennial and Amarillo. So those are the two uh, hops that we're gonna be using. Obviously, those hops are from West Coast. That's the reason why we're gonna use it. And that's the reason why this Pilsner is called a West Coast Pilsner. So what we're gonna need for this beer is something very simple. It's eight kilos, 340 grams of, uh, this time I'm using Besmols or Euro Pilsner. Uh, we're gonna use one kilo, 560 grams of Caterpils and one kilo and 40 grams of white wheat malt. And also we're gonna use 520 grams of Munich malt. That's all we're gonna use for this beer. Um, obviously, like I said, we're gonna use the um, uh, Centennial and Amarillo, but also what we're gonna do with this beer is we're gonna use Lutra, which is that yeast. Uh, it was given to me for, from uh, Beacon Brewing. So thank you the guys from Beacon Brewing that gave me that yeast. So we're gonna do the test. We're gonna add it into the beer. Oh, we're gonna add it to the beer, dumbass. We're gonna ferment the beer with the Lutra and uh, we're gonna just uh, see what the result. So yeah, what we're gonna do right now, we're gonna mill, we're gonna, well, we're gonna wait first and then we're gonna mill. We're gonna get everything ready so tomorrow morning we can basically brew it at clandestine, okay? Let's start. Hey guys, well, uh, as you've seen, we meal everything yesterday, so now it's uh, Monday, so we're gonna basically start our brew, and we're gonna start to put in the mash done together, okay? Well guys, as you've seen, we got the mash done uh, ready, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna add 11 and a half gallons of water, all right, let's do it. And also what else we're gonna do, we're gonna add uh, four grams of calcium sulfate. So we're gonna weigh it and add it. Well, we got the four grams of the calcium sulfate, so we're gonna add it to it. All right guys, have you seen, we got 11 and a half gallon. So before I do the graining, so what I'm gonna do is gonna start filling up my other kettle, which is gonna be my sparge water which is going to be nine gallons. Okay, let's add it to it. Well, we're filling up the, the kettle right now, but we're gonna do, basically, we're going to um, heat our, uh, our water is about 55 degrees. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna heat it up to um, 65, 67, and then gonna dough the grain in, and then we're gonna mash at 65, sorry. So yeah, let's, let's light it up. Well guys, as we heat it up the, the water before we don't drain in, uh, we're going to heat up, uh, was, we're going to leak the, the other burner to start heating up what uh, is going to be our sparse water. So uh, we filled it up nine gallons. So we're going to start heating it up. We're going to heat it up about 80 Celsius and we're going to let it there with the lid. Should, should stay between 75 to 80 by the time we need it. And yeah, let's get it on. Well, as you can see, we are 65 Celsius. What we're gonna do, basically start our uh, timer. Hey guys, what we're gonna do now, we're gonna do the iodine test. Uh, let's see how we're doing. It's been about 35 to 40 minutes, so yeah, let's, let's see what's going on. Well, 
Well guys, uh, as you've seen, we got uh, the iodine test uh, is negative, so that means we convert all the starch into sugar. So what we're going to do now, we're going to uh, raise our temperature to 75 Celsius to uh, do the mash out. And our sparge water is about 77 Celsius, so that's perfect to do the sparge. So yeah, uh, we're going to basically do the mash out and sparging and transfer and all that kind of stuff. All right, let's start. We transfer already, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna basically start boiling. Well guys, we start boiling now. So what we're gonna add is like, I said I'm gonna use Centennial, but I couldn't find the Centennial. I don't know what happened. Maybe I, was, I thought I had some, but whatever. We're gonna use Magnum instead. And this Magnum is 16.4% alpha acid. We're going for 15 gallons final, so we aim it for 30 IBUs. My calculation tells me I need 52 grams. All right, let's do it. 52 grams of Warrior, let's add it to it. Well guys, it's been 40 minutes, so now we're gonna add 50 grams of uh, Amarillo, Amarillo. Uh, we're gonna wait it and then we're gonna add it. So also we're gonna add the weird flock and we also wanna add, a, we wanna put the, the, co the coil and the chilling coil, whatever it's called, and we're gonna connect pumps and everything, all right? So let's, let's, let's start work. <music> 50 grams amarillo, or amarillo, whatever you call it, let's add it. Hey guys, well, we almost finished boiling. It's about like two minutes left. Uh, we're gonna do, we're gonna get like 60 grams, no, 50 grams of amarillo, or amarillo, whatever. Um, we're gonna add it uh, as a hop stand when we're about 80 Celsius, all right? Well, uh, <clears throat> let's get it ready. Hi everyone, well, we're finished. A, <clears throat> I got one point, uh, 1.046, I was expecting 10, 10.50. Um, today was kind of weird. I thought today would be really hot, like a couple days ago, and dry, but turns out it wasn't that dry. It started getting cloudy, and then started drizzling a little bit, drizzling a little bit, and yeah, uh, I was expecting to lose two gallons, so it's, I only lose, lost one gallon during, or evaporated one gallon during boiling. So I guess that's my differences of uh, 1.046 and 1.050 that I was looking for. Well, whatever, it's a Pilsner, I think it would be good. I'm expecting to finish 10.10 uh, 10 or 10.08, which will get me about like 4.6, 4.7% alcohol, which I, I like it for a Pilsner, I think it would be really good. Well. Uh, for the, right now, we're gonna let it ferment and uh, we're gonna come back in a couple of days to see how it goes. All right, let's rest. Hey guys, well, uh, <clears throat> it's Wednesday and uh, we came and checked the beer, checked the vessel. Turns out that it already came down, so we're gonna transfer it to cardboard, see what the gravity right now or the density, and yeah, let's, uh, yeah, let's get everything ready. Well guys, we finished transferring. As you see, we got uh, 1.006, really low and dry. Um, I was expected basically between 4.7 to 5%, I think I got there. Uh, let's see what happens. So we're gonna let it there, see what's, 
Uh, the transition, I'm gonna come check it out uh, day by day, see how this, the, the evolution of the beer or how the beer has been evolving. So all we're gonna do basically, just let it there. So now, let's press. Well guys, I'm very impressed. Today is Friday, it's been only four days and that beer is ready to keg. So yeah, let's get it done. Well guys, as you've seen, uh, we transferred a Final Gravity 1.006, which is, that's what it was uh, two days ago actually. And yeah, it didn't move anything, so it cleared up pretty fast and pretty nice. Like, I put some gelatin on it, but being honest, while, while I was transferring, I was thinking I probably wouldn't even need it. It was really nice and clear. Well, yeah, guys, uh, let's let it uh, carbonate and then I can do the part that I enjoy most, trying the beer and talking about it, all right? Well, let's rest. Last part of the video, the part that I enjoy most when I get to try the beer that we create. All right, guys. Well, uh, somebody put a comment in there. All right, guys. All right, guys. This is my second language. This is the only way I can start a conversation. <laughs> anyway, there it is. Four days, it was ready in the keg, ready to basically drink. Uh, it took me longer to actually edit the video and get the last little clips and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but actually the yeast making the beer, this yeast is a beast. This yeast was Lutra, as I told you guys, and Lutra from Omega. Man, do I ever seen a yeast ferment that fast? No. I wish, I've heard things about Kvike, I tried Kvike at 40 degrees, things like that, like Voss. To me, it's probably a day faster than it would be the regular US5 or 1056. Uh, this one it was insane, but the next day it was 106, from 148 to 106, About 1046, 1046 to 1006, it was super fast. So before we try, subscribe to the channel, activate the notification bell, and hit that like button that YouTube likes it, or the algorithm likes it, so this is the way you can help to make my channel grow. So the more you do that, basically more people will be, or YouTube will recommend me with more other people. Like if the more traffic and more uh, uh, reactions are in my videos, positive or negative, doesn't really matter. YouTube doesn't care if it's positive or negative as long as there, there are um, uh, oh, reactions, basically it start recommending your video. Well, before, uh, beside that, let's try this beer. Interesting, it gets a little cross between what West Coast and Pilsner is. Uh, it kind of has a little bit of smell of bready, kind of think we use best malt, which is normally that that's a grain bring that kind of stuff. And the Amarillo, that's, that hop, I really love it. It's really nice, it smells so nice. And you can smell it so I would call it this a cross between a West Coast and a Pilsner it's kind of like a conflict because it's not such thing as a West Coast Pilsner well it is now but it's not like well let's see like a BJCP has been recognized yet so something is starting like the call IPA let's call it I actually the call IPA I thought the best name for a call IPA would be a West Coast Pilsner as at the beginning they used to that they used to use just uh, Pilsner malt and uh, use a uh, lager yeast and fermented kind of higher temperature so it didn't make sense to me to call it cold ipa now they're using g's uh lg's and fermenting and, and cold temperature that kind of makes more sense to call it cold ipa but right now they use corn they use uh pale to row i don't know it just got got, got crazy uh, okay fernando shut up and drink it <sighs> nice lace well, ooh, 
it tastes like um, you got the amarillo a lot uh, what I meant is like um, oh by the way I use magnum for bitterness the bitterness the magnum brings even if there is a substitution of the warrior I didn't find it the same uh, quite different one to the another one so it's to me, I don't know if it's a substitution, maybe it's a substitution and, and flavor or an, or an aroma in the end, but uh, for bitterness, I use it because it has a, such a high uh, alpha acid percentage, so that's what I use it. Um, what I detect is basically the amarillo, as you guys know, amarillo is very citrusy uh, without getting into the grapefruit. It's more like a, just citrus, that's it. And um, uh, to be 10, 10 or 6, it doesn't feel that dry, being honest, feels really nice. Uh, I guess it's the balance with the hops that basically bring that that and I got I want to thank Harold uh, Street Brewery which is the first time I tried a West Coast Pilsner I got it from them I went to the bar and I have a beer I fall in love and say I have to recreate this I promise to bring a bottle to to the to the brewer so he can try uh, like I like it's like you guys know like I go to breweries try beer and I kind of get inspired and I try to recreate the beer or not exactly the same but what I will do with something like you just bring me an idea to what I would like to do next and I went to Harold I recommend it 100% a really nice place uh, it's not a sponsor, it's not paying absolutely anything for that. It's, it's by heart what I'm saying, it's true. I really love their beer. I love the atmosphere on the place. It's really nice if you guys haven't been. It's in Herald Street in Victoria. <laughs> it's not that hard to find. All right, guys. Well, um, man, I could drink this all day in this sunny day, man. It's so hot in Victoria right now. The beauty of El Victoria, we got that um, nice breeze from the ocean which is fresh but it's hot that's in Monterey <laughs> right now it's like close to 30 degrees and but a nice breeze all right guys I guess I'm not gonna bore you with more um, of my stuff on my things uh, this channel is just to show how I brew I guess we'll see you in the next one